Welcome to day 466. You're not, you're broke, not broken. You're broke, not broken. Today is a eight minute video, uh, motivation video, compilation of um, uh, speeches from Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. And it's a little bit of his backstory. And so um, a lot of people don't realize that um, uh, Dwayne Johnson's father was a pretty famous wrestler back in the day in the 60s and 70s named Rocky Johnson and um, and he looked up to his old man you know he traveled and and it was during the late 60s and 70s with the civil rights and um, it was mostly there weren't that many black athletes and the audience was all white and what Dwayne Johnson said was he he traveled the circuit with his dad and he saw his dad win people over. Now you gotta think back to the 60s and 70s. I mean, it's not like now, like their interracial couples were very rare. Even that TV show when I was growing up in the 80s, the Jeffersons, George Jefferson, well, hey, we're moving on up. And they had an interracial couple. That was very like, like uh, racy at the time. So to see his old man, like go through everything, um, was a motivation to him. So tip number one, motivation is not far from home. You don't have to go travel the world looking for motivation. You don't have to like, like there are people in your immediate circle who will motivate you. Okay, like I, like I don't have to look much further than my dad for motivation to understand to get me through the hard times, to really try to figure it out, right? So at the age of 14 or so, um, obviously his, his parents weren't together. The Rock's parents weren't together anymore. And they were evicted from Hawaii. They, they're sent to Pennsylvania. And he said, I never want this to happen again. So what does he do? He works on his body. He sees his dad, he sees his role models like Muhammad Ali. These are men that are big, they use their hands, they worked on their bodies, and that's what he did. So that was his, that, to make sure that this never happened again, in his little mind, he thought, I'm gonna get really big. So motivation doesn't have to, you don't have to travel to the ends of the earth. In fact, a lot of people, I mean, they'll just sit there, they'll, the average person will sit around and just be like, oh, I just need someone to come motivate me. Well, dude, they're at the dining table with you. You know, they're your grandpa's war stories. They're your grandpa's, uh, grandparents' um, stories about growing up in the Great Depression. You know, they're, um, they're your parents. So Dwayne, The Rock Johnson, traveled with his dad and saw what his dad did, saw his dad win over the crowd saw his dad break racial barriers, saw his dad rise, you know, win the crowd over so that they would start cheering for him. Motivation is not far from home, y'all. In fact, watch this, comment, do this right now. Comment if you have someone in your life that motivates you, that inspires you. You know, it could be an uncle, it could be an Uncle Billy. <laughs> it could be an aunt, it could be a sister. Right? You, you, might, you might have an older sister or a younger sister who has her shit together. It could be a, an offspring, you know? It could be one of your children. Got their shit together. Got money saved. You know, no drama. Okay, motivation, you don't have to go looking all over for it. It's right there in your backyard, man. Right? I'd like to think that one day Mason and Kizzy will look at me and be inspired as opposed to look at me and be disgusted or turned off or take it for granted. I like to think Erica gets a little inspired by me, you know? They're right there. You know, you don't have to wait on anything. The point of tip number one is the average person sits around and waits. I, they're waiting for it. Like, oh, I'm just so unmotivated. Oh, I just don't know what to do. I just, really? There are so many great stories right there in your backyard. Tip number two.
It's a learned behavior. We talked about this the other day. It's a learned behavior. So towards the end of the video, Dwayne Johnson talks about, you know, as I got older, I saw, I saw, I learned more about my father. And he also was homeless. He also had to pull himself up from his bootstraps. Who understands what I'm saying? It's a learned behavior. It's a generational lesson. Okay? Ironic thing, and I'll briefly tell the story because it's just fucking... Like, it, it occurred to me many years later when I was talking on stage. I didn't know this at the time. So I often said my dad left his um, left the, his wife and the other kids picked me. We, uh, we escaped in the middle of the night on a crowded boat ended up in a refugee camp in Thailand. We were there for six months or so, came to the United States in a weird country by myself. The whole journey took about a year or so. So my dad, when we got to the United States, my dad was 36, I was six, right? So fast forward, I grew up and in 2008, 2005, I graduated residency, I'm a doctor. I get $4 million in debt. By like 2000 uh, 2008, disaster hits me. The financial crisis, the real estate market crashes. Um, I'm four million dollars in debt, and then Hurricane Ike wipes me out. My properties can't be rented out, but the banks are hurting, so they don't give any leniencies, and they want their monthly payment. Well, I had twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars a month of mortgages to pay. I can't pay that. My practice was barely getting off the ground. I I had just started doing uh, lap bands and turned my practice around and I, I wasn't even taking home a salary yet, you know, I couldn't ha handle it. Well guess how fucking old I was? I was 36, I was 35, going on 36. And uh, guess how old Kizzy was? She was 5, going on 6. Isn't that crazy? So by the time I had to declare bankruptcy and move away, I was 36, 37, and Kizzy was six. And I had to move away to a foreign country. It was called Southern, Southern Illinois, <laughs> a little tiny town where people did not speak Texan. <laughs> they spoke a whole different language. And I had to start all over again. It's crazy. And so Dwayne Johnson says, I found out that my old man was homeless. My old man was evicted. See, it's generational. It's a learned behavior. 16 short years later, at the age of 52, my dad retires independently wealthy. To, to the best of my estimates, he was making about $20,000 free and clear every month. Comment if you, can, if you could live on $20,000 free and clear every month. $20,000 free and clear every month. Which is ironic because that's, you know, you know, a couple years ago, that's where I was. I was at $20,000 a month. I'm doing better than that now. But it's so ironic. Like these, the same histories, right? And my dad couldn't speak English. He, even, by, even when he died, he, he, he was still embarrassed about his English. He never, he never really like mastered it. Like you couldn't have a deep conversation with him in English. But 52, he was done. He actually could have retired at 50, but they begged him not to retire at his plant. They said, oh no, we need you, you're such a good worker. So he stayed on for two, two or three more years, right? Just doing whatever he wanted to do. They, they would let him walk around the plant and do whatever he wanted to do. Work on whatever he did, right? So it's generational. When you look for these stories, these motivations, and you say, oh my God, my old man did it. I can do it. My mother did it. I can do it. If my sister can do it, I can do it. If Dr. V's dad can do it, I can do it. If Dr. V can do it, I can do it. Right? Does that make sense? Like, you know, I'm sitting here complaining about $20,000 credit card debt. That's nothing. Fucking get, get onto resellers and boom, you're done. You, you understand what I'm saying? Get your side hustle going and you'll be done. Find your freedom number whittle it down say this is it man and stick to it 
What's your freedom number? Build it up. This is not a goal number. The freedom number is not the number where you're like, oh, it'd be nice, Dr. V, sure would be nice to have $10,000 a month. That's my goal for 2021, I have $10,000 a month. How much you make now? How much you take home now? I take home about 2,000. How the fuck are you gonna get make up $8,000? Oh no, that's just my goal, that's just my dream. I'm gonna do it, I'll figure it out. No, you won't. Stop that shit. You won't. Dr. V, this is not very motivational. I know, because it's practical. This is what you need to do. You need to get the freedom number, not your goal number. Not, not how much you'd like to have, not your, if I, if I sign up two people and they sign up two people and they sign up two people and they sign up two people and I work really hard for the next six months, dude, I'll be a blue diamond ambassador. None of that shit, man. See, and then it never happens. What, what happens six months later? Nothing. Still the same shit. Why? You don't have your freedom number. Right? I mean, just that, just that word alone is nice. My freedom number, all my bills, all my expenses. What's that number? Be specific. $35, $46.33. Boom. Now you got a target. Now you got a target to go for. Next tip. One of the things that The Rock said in a previous video that we watched, which I will remind y'all. He says, when your back is against the wall, forward is the only way to go. When your back is against the wall, forward is the only way to go. I mean, how many of y'all are gonna turn off this video and go back to bed? How many of y'all are gonna turn off this video and turn on The Price is Right? Or how many of y'all are gonna call your AP or sit down at the desk or open your bank statements, bank account, and look at your freedom number. How many of y'all are gonna get a fucking piece of paper, a napkin, a scrap piece of mail, on the back, get you a pen that barely works, get a marker, get a crayon, cause your kids have crayons, and write down, rent, 1,200, electricity, you know, 200, 225, you know, water, gas, internet, Cable TV, who the fuck? My cable TV is $150? Cell phone bill, car insurance, car payment. And you add it all up and you go, damn, it's $5,000. And your husband goes, what, what are you doing there? He said, and you say, our freedom number is $5,000. What's the freedom number? That's our monthly expenses. That's like the minimum expenses. He, and he goes, $5,000? And he goes, but we only take home 4,500. And then you do what? Face plant, boom! You take home 4,500 and your freedom number is 5,000? Is $5, You're $500 short. Oh no, but we got some money in the 401k. Not for long. You can't keep that up. You won't have it. When your back is against the wall, forward is the only way to go. What does that mean? See, it sounds cute. It sounds cute. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. When you hit rock bottom, you gotta land on your, your Les Brown, land on your back so you can look up, you can get up. Like, woohoo, I love me some Les Brown. What the fuck does that mean? What does that mean? What are you actually going to do? Are you gonna lean against the wall and then walk forward? No. See, it sounds cute, but once you turn off the video, once you leave the conference, once you watch the YouTube video, you go, oh yeah, I'm motivated, but what the fuck are you gonna do? You don't know. So Dr. V says, dude, you gotta write down the, when your back is against the wall, forward is the only way to go. What does forward mean? Forward means sit down right now, write your freedom number. What do I do, Dr. V? Write your fucking freedom number. Don't pull it out of thin air. Add up the numbers, add up the bills. That's how much you need. And then you can sit there and go, all right, well, we don't need fucking cable. We, you don't need ESPN. But you know, I, I have to figure out what's going on with my football training camps. No, you don't. You get it on the internet. 
You'll get it in Yahoo News. Did you know? Tell your husband right now. Slap your husband. Psh. Say, husband, you could go on Yahoo.com and watch all every Thursday night football game for free. They stream it on Yahoo.com. Thursday night football game. You don't have to buy the NFL package to watch your Thursday night games. What? It's free. So now you get your freedom number. You're like, oh, no wonder. It's you and your fucking ESPN sports package. Let's get rid of that. It's eating out. Everyone, you see. Let's have to do my weight loss surgery, Dr. B, because everybody's always like, we're going to stop eating out. We're going to eat at home. Okay. Why don't you go through the freezer first before you buy anything else? It's your little knickknacks. It's your little, oh, I have a grandbaby, got a birthday. Dr. V, are you telling me never to spend money again? No, that's what Susie Orman tells you. That's what David Ramsey tells you. I'm telling you, do whatever the fuck you want. But you're not going to get very far if your freedom number is 5,000 and you are, your take home is only 4,500. And you can't resist the urge. You cannot resist the urge to buy another fucking purse, another pair of shoes. Really? You can't figure this shit out. Dr. V told you a year ago, quit buying this Amazon shit. Start selling your shit on Facebook Marketplace. People are being stupid, they're buying. Did you do it? Or did you keep, are you like, nah, nobody wants my shit. And you kept buying Amazon. Now your plumbing went out. Now your, you know, you know, your leech field went out. You gotta put up a new septic tank and you can't go to San Diego. <laughs> Damn it, he's calling me out. <laughs> See, these are, these are prob this is problematic. When your back's against the wall, forward is the only way to go. What have you done? You know, that was six months ago. You learned that lesson six months ago. Did you actually do anything? Some of y'all are gonna be proud. Tip number four. Some of y'all gonna be proud. Some of y'all gonna be embarrassed. Which one are you? Tip number four. You're not broke. You're broke, you're not broken. You're not broken. So tip number four is, some of y'all gonna be proud, some of y'all gonna be embarrassed. Which one are you, all right? Who's, gonna, who's willing to admit? Who's willing to admit, I'm proud versus I'm embarrassed? I'm gonna tell you, I am not proud. The last six months, I've kind of been taking it easy. I still have 25, 2,600 COVID rapid tests to sell. If you multiply that times $50 a test, that's $110,000 that I didn't push it during January and February. And I should have been because now you can use the COVID rapid test to check your antibodies. I'm a little embarrassed. You can't have both. Are you gonna be proud or are you gonna be embarrassed? I'm a little embarrassed, I'll be honest with you. You know, I haven't built up this tribe as big as I wanted. Eh. I haven't traveled as many places. I don't know. My garden's not where I want it to be. My chicken coop looks like a fucking pigsty. <laughs> a little embarrassed. My books are not out. My Facebook fan page is a mess. It's I gotta sit down and start like po like scheduling my posts. Nah. I'm drinking too much. I haven't done my taxes. Dr. V's embarrassed. Why the fuck are you proud? Why are you proud? Oh, I'm proud in some areas. Nah, you should be embarrassed. No, no, I did good here. No. Nah. Who knows? Who knows? No, no, I, I did this. I, I accomplished this goal. If you were honest with yourself, if you were honest with yourself, you would look at that goal, that accomplished goal, that thing, that whatever. You would say, if you were honest, you'd go, ah, oh, man, I could have done more. Admit it. Admit it. Even the goals that you accomplished, admit it. You could have done more. You could have gotten one more client. You could have sold one more course. 
You could have read one more book. You could have done a little bit more. Everybody has that in them. You could have done a little bit more, couldn't you? You know it. Dr. V, you just, you know, we had this great week in Costa Rica. Yeah, but I could have done more. You zip lined, you AT, you, you know, four wheeler up into the mountains in the jungle and saw the Toucan Sams and, and you zip lined and you climbed waterfalls. Yeah, but I met a guy with this mega fucking yacht. Huge yacht. That, you know, cost him $200,000 a year to maintain. The cost to maintain his yacht is $200,000 a year. He paid $4 million for it. Great, fucker. He goes, do you play golf? I'm like, no, I don't play golf. He goes, that's my thing, man. I love to play golf. I was like, fuck. Because if I had played golf, he goes, come play golf with me tomorrow. I didn't play golf. Damn it. Great trip. Oh, well, now, Dr. Vong, you're sitting there saying, like, what? You need to be happy in the moment, Dr. V. You need to be happy in the moment. You need to be okay with yourself. You're being too hard on yourself. Where the fuck has that gotten you this whole time? Where has that gotten you this whole time? Let me tell you a little secret. Y'all saw me. I went live every day in Costa Rica. Did I look miserable? I'm sitting here. I got the hottest chick at the pool. She's in my arms. I'm like, you know, I'm carrying her in my arms. We're spinning around in a circle. We're kissing, we're smooching. We're cheersing, we're drinking. The hottest chick in the pool. And did I look miserable? Fuck no, I was happy. See, the average person thinks either or. Oh, elevator tip. I forgot, that's why. <laughs> elevator tip. Who's ready for the elevator tip? ET, let's do this. Here's the elevator tip for you today. Get to and. This is a big one. Get to and. A-N-D. Get to and. Get to apostrophe and. A-N-D. Get more ands in your life. A-N-D. See, the average person thinks either or. I can either be happy or rich. Dr. V says, why not both, motherfucker? Why not rich and happy? I've got to go to work. It's either work or vacation. Uh, I think I was on vacation and I did a live with y'all every day. Vacation and work? Is that possible? Oh no, Dr. V, I'm spiritual. Uh, that's really stupid. Why aren't you spiritual and rich? Why is it or? I'm broke, but at least I'm, I'm spiritual. That's stupid. You know? And. Stop saying average people go either or. I can either be rich, either be rich, or happy. Dr. V's both. Both. I'm happy and a little embarrassed. I'm a little embarrassed I didn't do quite as much as I want. Didn't get as much done. Cruising too much. But Dr. V, you had a great 2020. I made more money in 2020 than my whole I've ever made in my life. What the hell? Because I thought and. I thought bigger. And <laughs> I look back at 2020 and I go, I could have sold more rapid tests. I should have kept making, you know, doing daily updates, but I got so frustrated with everything that was happening. I need to go on right now because it's been a month since my Moderna. I should do a rapid test and say, man, I still have antibodies. Buy a kit, buy some kits. And I would sell $5,000 worth. Can't be bothered. But I know if I don't do it, six months from now, I'm gonna look back and I'm gonna be like, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed again. Elevator tip, get to and, A-N-D. In your brain, in your brain. 
you gotta get to and. Listen to me. I work hard and I'm happy. Oh no, work, you work too hard. I'd rather be happy. I work hard and I'm happy. Who understands what I'm saying? Ah, oh, you can't work all the time, Dr. V. Why not? It fucking makes me happy. You can't be happy working that hard. You can't be happy. I can be happy. I'm at and. I work hard and I'm happy. And six months later, I'm pissed at myself because I didn't work hard enough. But in the moment, you sit there and go, oh, I'm doing everything I can do. That's always the case. It's always the case. In the moment, you're like, this is as much as I can do. But six months later, you go, ah, oh, I should have promoted it more. I should have told more people about resellers. I should have told more people about my dildos. I should have done this. I should have done that. See, there's always another level. What happens is you, people think that way and they stay broke. What Dr. V is saying is you're not broken. You're not broken. There's nothing for you to fix. There's no skill you need to acquire. The fact that you're watching this video means you already have it inside of you. It's already there. There's nothing for you. There's nothing for you to you need to do. There's no classes, no courses, there's no degree, there's no certification. You need to get, you don't need to wait. You need to have the shift in your brain, this and shift. I can, I can be happy and rich in the moment. I can work hard and be happy and rich. I can work hard, be happy and rich and be spiritual. I can have it all. I can have great kids. I can have loving kids. I can have fun kids. Oh no, my kids are little monsters. My kids are rowdy. That's because you're thinking either or. You're thinking like, oh, my, I have to spoil my kids or my peace of mind. What? I don't fight with my kids. I have my peace of mind. They're well behaved. They do what I tell them. You, it's who give me an aha if you just had an aha about your kids like you just had this aha you're like oh my god you mean it's not my peace of mind and spoiling them like either or like they have to behave a certain way like what i can have both i can be a happy mom and have happy kids and not spoil them and show them yes yes but your mindset is the problem, right? It's too hard, it's too much. No, six months from now, you're gonna go, I could have done more. I could have done more. I should have listened to Dr. V. I should have like gotten out of my own way. I should have signed up for resellers. I should have gone to San Diego. I should have, should have, should have. That's always the fucking case. Every one of y'all go, I should have had weight loss surgery sooner. Don't you? I should have had weight loss surgery sooner. I shouldn't have listened. I shouldn't have stopped. I shouldn't have listened to my mother-in-law. I shouldn't have listened to my coworker. I should have fired my therapist sooner. <laughs> I should have fired my therapist sooner. Because all my therapist did was tell me how to handle a situation. Told me, if my anxiety comes up, I just need to breathe through it. If I was in a social situation and I was embarrassed that I, here are things I just needed to do. I needed to hold a cup of fizzy ginger ale water so people think I have a drink that my therapist says I needed to just focus on one person and keep a conversation to one person and that way I don't have social anxiety. What my therapist should have told me was, you're not broken. There is nothing wrong with you. You're what we called an introvert and that's okay. You can have it all. You can be an introvert and be comfortable in a party what? 
this whole time I thought I had to either stay home or go or have anxiety attack or be calm or be no you can have it all you can have it all I love you very much day 466 will change your life when your back's against the wall moving forward means sitting down right now today and writing down your freedom number go bye